Welcome to the Good Axe Pub. Oh, I didn't play the cow. Oh well, I'll do it next time. <sighs> I don't know if my voice is going to hold up. I haven't been getting much of sleep. So I turned a piece of watercolor paper sideways and cut it in half. Now, I've got two smaller I was thinking of designing some stuff, maybe playing around with color today. What do you think? What should we do for the channel? I don't know, man. Oh, I'm gonna have to eat this. What's that? I was gonna to have to mute that so I could blow my nose. Ah. But you need to turn the camera off, so. <laughs> I don't really care if I'm blowing my nose and people see it. I just care if they can hear it. Well, yeah, because seeing it's not worse. <laughs> oh, I'd say it's a lot worse to hear. Oh. I mean, it could get bad if you had to see it, but. Generally speaking, I don't think that's that anything to worry about, but when you're, you can hear it gurgle out somebody's nose. So, I will try to avoid having people hear that. Here we go. Hmm. Any possibilities, and I don't even know where to begin. I want to do some simple stuff. I don't know if anything simple will fit. <laughs> <laughs> the music's getting to me. I was going to suggest the castle, just because. <laughs> I think I could probably paint a castle. Like some kind of creepy gray skull type of thing. I probably could do that. Ugh. Yeah, I spent all day in Fort Wayne for a quiz bowl tournament that I was told that the quiz bowl season ended in December. So to find out that I had to go to this thing in Fort Wayne, and we didn't do badly, but still took all day. And I had to get up early. It's like, ugh. So. Ugh. Lesson learned. Don't be a coach next year. <laughs> uh. Well, I think there's only one guy on the coaching group, I guess, uh, that went to more mat or meets than I did, and I was supposed to just be the backup backup. So, uh. plus, I don't really understand how you coach quiz bowl. No things. Like, that doesn't really help. You know. Is it random? Do you are there subjects that you can study or? Uh no, it's it's pretty much random. I mean, it covers the. I mean, there has been stuff on there where I'm just like, how does anyone off the cuff just know this? There are things that my sons got right, and I was just like, how do you know this? There was a question today. Now, to, to give you some context, uh, it was a 
it was a subcategory of questions. So the theme was already established as being simulators. So I was reading the questions and all I said was this intentionally buggy and my son buzzed in from intentionally buggy. He knew the answer. And I'm like, how? There could be all kinds of things that are intentionally buggy. He's like, yeah, but there's only one simulator that's done like that. Like, okay, if you say so. So it's just crazy stuff. Some of these kids, just like, but it's always kind of funny because <laughs> there was one question I read today, and it was about, uh, you know, this team. Like, it's got all this stuff in it that I think is just a distractor. And you get to the end and it tells you what you really need to know. Where it's like, you know, this team left Brooklyn and went to L.A. And it was a baseball question. Somewhere in there it was mentioned baseball. And uh, it's just so funny because most of the kids on those quiz bowls, they'll know all kinds of things. But you ask them a sports question and it's just deer in headlights. So the team guessed giants and you can see all the sport people in the, in the room just roll their eyes because you know that's football but it's just like that stereotypical nerd stuff about you know they don't ever do sports or watch sports or anything meanwhile we've got a guy on my team that you ask him stuff about football like he'll he was talking about games in the 70s. I'm like, I was alive, but I wasn't watching football. Wasn't watching much of anything. I guess it depends on which part of the 70s it was for me. Well, I am positive I was not watching football in the 70s. I was born in 77, late 77. So. For the most part, I was only two years old. Well, <clears throat> I was pretty young, but I was around. Yeah. Back before we had this newfangled internet. Yeah, we actually went outside and did shit. Yeah, weird. That was one thing I noticed with my boys that I thought was weird. Like, I can remember we started off with Star Wars toys, but then we really, like, my friend group really focused on G.I. Joe toys. Um, and I was into He Man. But, I mean, there were toys that you wanted, you know? Like, there are things you wanted to play with. But my kids barely, like, they never wanted action figures, ever. They just did not care. Well, because they were born in the game generation. Yeah, I guess, but... Well, gaming in my generation, you had to actually have money and go to the arcade to play. <laughs> So, well, I mean... Unless you were semi-wealthy. Huh. Oh, I don't know about that. I mean, I can remember well, getting an Atari. My generation started a few years before yours. That's true. I remember having an Atari 2600. Yeah, that was that was later. <laughs> yeah, because I remember it. So it would have been in the 80s. Early 80s. Because I remember we had Pac-Man and, you know, stuff. And... But, and I can remember when people started getting Nintendos and my parents just weren't going to buy one. I was like, really? What? Like I said, I can remember when HBO was only for the rich kids. Well, that's true. And... You know that that changed, but obviously, but yeah, 
most of my life I've spent without HBO. Like I picked it up for free uh, with when I got uh, my internet for a while, but I got. I'd have to just about double my lifespan before I could say more of my time has been spent with HBO than without it. Quite frankly, if it wasn't so cheap right now, I'd probably get rid of it because I just I barely have time to watch well, TV as is. It, it's not what it was in those days anyway. <laughs> That's true. Like in those days, that was it was rare. There was nothing, I mean, really nothing else like it. There was no I think there was for a while there was just HBO and Cinemax and Stars. Like it was HBO and then it was HBO and Cinemax and Cinemax was the adult stuff. Uh, and then Stars was the movies that you had already seen or already been in theaters, but were coming out again on videotape or laser disc or whatever. Well, yeah, I think you, yeah, Stars didn't start out until 1994. I think you're thinking about Showtime. Showtime. Yeah, I mean, Let's see. History of Showtime. Well, I'm saying it yeah. started with HBO, and then it was like HBO and then Cinemax. And... Yeah. But Showtime launched in 76, so it's older than I am. So. I wasn't sure about Stars. I didn't think it was that old. I, I'm kind of surprised it started in the 90s, but. That doesn't sound right. But, I, but you know, I guess age can do that. <laughs> well, you know, I say the other day there, we had this thing at work, this, this kind of ongoing argument about Keanu Reeves because he's a terrible actor. I don't care what you say. Like, he's fine as long as he uh, doesn't have to actually talk. <laughs> so, I, I disagree, but with the caveat that he's he's got a very limited type of role that he's any good at, really. Okay, I, and that's kind of that's kind of our our stand. That, that's yeah, I agree. There are certain things he's great at. Like I thought he was great in the Matrix because he was confused the entire time, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah, that's your wheelhouse. I don't know. I like when he started trying to do the Bruce Lee imitations. It didn't work for me, but. <laughs> No. Okay. <laughs> but Bill and Ted was perfect for him. <laughs> I actually thought he did pretty good in Point Break, too. Oh, well. All right. But, uh... Well, you know, the role. Yeah. Hey, Frank. Hey, Frank. I just know, like, there are a couple women on in my department who are like, who think he's a great actor, and I'm just like, you are crazy. But now I forgot where I was going with that. Huh. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So we had this argument. We were talking, and they're like, what was that one film about? And you know, they're like, you know, like these girls show up. And I think, and I, and I was trying to remember the name of it because I know what they're talking about. And I was like, was it uh, Hard Candy? No. Was it Jawbreaker? No. Like, and I just couldn't remember what it was. And I know, because at the end of the movie, spoiler alert, uh, he gets buried up to his neck. Um, and he has to wait for his wife to come home. Um, but, whatever. It's called Knock Knock, in case you're wondering. I really wasn't, but okay. <laughs> well, he plays this guy who's home alone and these two girls show up on his doorstep and uh, convince him to let him in and then they basically frame him for cheating on his wife and yeah, it's and, like a poison uh, ivy type thing I can tell yeah but 
I don't know. I just, just could not. I was like, are you sure? It's like, like I was. Yeah, the, the Mandala effect was strong with that one. I was like, are you sure? Like, I was thinking different actresses that were in there. Like, no, it's not that one. Because I was getting all those movies like just jumbled up in my brain. Yeah, we're all wet. Can we come in? Yeah, exactly. That's the one. Oh, well. Are you drawing a Viking? Uh, not really, but it could be. I just think you have a helmet with horns. Yeah, there's a helmet with horns. I was, you know, think a little bit more fantasy. Okay, so it's a dwarf? Yeah, kind of like that. It's just a little, I mean, it's pencil right now, so it's kind of hard to, in your hands in a way. Right, well. <laughs> kind of has just, to be, I get it, I'm just saying. I'm, I'm just trying to set it up at the moment, so. Oh. One of the things I noticed in my watercolor sketchbook, I don't really do a whole lot of. <clears throat> a whole lot of details while I'm drawing it. Yeah. I just kind of draw the outside and play around with the inside with the watercolor. So. That's kind of what I'm thinking, something like that. I've got a lot of pencil on this side where I was sketching, and so that kind of dictates that the light source is from this way. <laughs> so no. it, that's okay, I'll just go with it. Well, it could be a Viking, but you know, real Vikings didn't have horns on their helmets. I know. <laughs> well, then that wasn't for your benefit. <laughs> it was for the benefit of somebody who thinks the Vikings really had horns on their helmets. Yeah, I do that every time you do that. Every time I fall for it. <laughs> because you're the only one actually talking, so. Yeah. And, and it, yeah. I'm just, it, you know, like I'm predicting that there's going to be somebody watching this in the future that will not know that little tidbit. I'm probably wrong, you know. I'm pretty good at being wrong. Uh, that's like... So I shared this this thing with my department about this no-day calculator thing. And uh, that was Thursday night. And we did indeed have a, a snow day on Friday. But uh, one of the guys in my group we have a group chat was like I hate it when Brent is right but oh well we have a snow day I was like there are plenty of times I would love to be wrong no problem whatsoever well those are the times that you're not right <laughs> oh yeah I'm like like I was a lot of times I'll tell students there's no way we're having a snow day because that seems to increase the chances of having a snow day. <laughs> as soon as you think it's on lock, that's when you don't have one. So,
No one name this channel it's because uh, we got that name in uh, Slack. But it was just kind of a smart ass thing about, you know, a fantasy pub name. Right. But going forward, I never really considered what it would entail to do something that had a gourd ox on it. <laughs> like like a sign that had a gourd ox on it. Especially a that, gross. that has that well, it would have that mean evil look, but so the question is that like I was being facetious when I named it, but what gourds an ox? <laughs> uh... Yeah, that's, that's where I'm at. That's why. That's why I haven't done a, a channel logo yet. Well, I mean, it, technically, you could just show a dead ox. I mean, it's. No, I think you'd have to show it being gored, and generally when it's gored, something's ramming it with horns right about the belly section. So I would think it would be rampant, you know what I mean? Like it's raised up on its hind legs. Yeah. You're the one that came up with it, man. Right? I could probably do like a little stick figure medieval dudes and long socks like the the original the dark man in the dark tower holding the spear maybe if we get enough people to ever watch we'll generate a vote or a poll You have a cold or something still? Nah, now we're just into the whole I wake up with a runny nose, I go to bed with a runny nose, and in between I'm fine. It's just that time of year. Oh. I bet you'd much rather wake up with runny toes. <laughs> No, see the funny thing is, like you wake up, I like, I'll wake up and I'm fine for like the first five minutes, and then I'll have a sneezer, which will last like five or ten more minutes, where I can barely breathe. I'm sneezing so much, just sneeze after sneeze after sneeze, and then my nose will run for like an hour, and then it'll just dry up, and then at the end of the day, it starts to run again, and then I think, ah. But whatever. I was blessed with allergies as a child. Jeff says he counts at least 10 people. 10 people doing what? I don't understand. Well, probably says underneath the video that 10 people are watching. Oh. Maybe. I only see one. Which would be Jeff, I'm assuming. Oh, no, well, two. <laughs> it's kind of weird how it works like that, huh? Yeah, it is weird. Well, whoever you are watching, welcome to the Gordox Pub. Oh, he counts as. Oh. <laughs> yes, you do, Jeff. Ah, that's you a whole and all different, your personalities. That's a whole different thing, right? Yeah, at the, uh, at the quiz bowl meet today, you know, we took a short bus, and uh, the other coach was driving. And... Uh, we pull up to the school, and he goes, now I want all the trash out of here. 
And I was like, dude, that's no way to talk to our students. <laughs> Did he have a sense of humor? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, that's during one of the, 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 the heats, uh, my one son was substituted out. And he's like, do you guys care if I go get a drink? I was like, this time you can, but if you do it again, I'm breaking your legs. And the other coach was like, uh, okay. Apparently Marion's very hardcore. <laughs> I was like, eh, he's my son. I'm allowed to be hardcore with him. <laughs> no, you're too young. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, not in school. <laughs> we tell you about is... that. They catch you, they'll take you away. Yeah. The <laughs> uh, the school we were in is they're they're still under construction, and we're you know, and we were in like one of the newer areas, and it had so much. Like there were rooms that had an entire wall of glass. So anyone walking by is just going to see right into your classroom. And I was like, you know, that sounds cool. But <laughs> that is a bad idea. And like all the rooms had windows into the inside of the building. And I was just like, what are you thinking? Like you're, you're just going to have to cover all that up because there's no way. Like I'm, I'm sorry. I don't think there is a school in the, in the world where you're not going to have people being stupid outside your classroom because they can see in. You know, when they go to the bathroom, they'll wave with their friends or whatever. Just I was like, oh, this is a bad idea. Somebody, some architecture, some architect who has no idea designed this thinking, oh, this will look pretty. Form was was more important than function and I think that's a bad idea. <clears throat> yeah, architects aren't thinking about them being kids. Yeah. One of the other coaches I was actually very impressed with. I don't know why. Like I don't know You don't know why you were impressed with them? I know why I was impressed, I guess, but I don't, I don't know. I don't, I mean, I don't know why I find it impressive, I guess. I mean, the, the, <laughs> the cause of it is he just seems so kind of like, I don't know, like really, ex like, like I just ask questions, right? Like, I, like I'm going through and like, all right, so what's this? What's this? And all right, let's try this. And he just seemed really like, Oh, well, do you guys know any French philosophers? Like, so can you think of any? And it just, it was, it was just more of a, I don't know, an exploratory nudge. And it was just, I don't know, it was weird. And I was talking to the guy I went down with, and we both teach, he teaches science, I teach English. And, and he was like, yeah, that guy had a really good vibe, like with the kids. Like, it was just, just had a really good tone and I was like I wish I could match that tone when I'm dealing with my own students like, I think that's a I, I just thought the guy was great very strange like it's rare when I see other teachers doing stuff where I think oh man I wish I could match that tone but that tone was just I liked it I liked it a lot it was very supportive Part of the reason I have a hard time being super supportive is because a lot of the stuff, I just see the BS of it, and I have a hard time masking that. Uh. Like some of those things on the quiz bowl, I'm just like, why, why does any of this matter? And the way they wrote the questions, I was just like, all right, like just like 80% of it is crap that nobody's going to know 
with the last five words, that's where it is. That's that that tells you everything you need. It's like, and the the eighty or ninety percent that you have to read is full of stuff that I don't even know how to pronounce. And I was like, couldn't you guys just make this about the end that everyone is going to be able to pronounce? But no, that's not how you do it. Jeff said, so whoever you draw that is going to the Yogg should probably be drinking beer out of a horn tankard for sure. Well, if you picture it on an old medieval sign, you wouldn't have that much detail. It's just enough to recognize it. <clears throat> Interesting note for those who don't know. Uh, those signs... That I'm just specifying, Brett. I'm not talking to you. <laughs> I know. I was. I, I caught that. And I was like, "Oh, he's doing that for me." <laughs> Those signs were an old language because they didn't have a, a written language that was common among the common people. So they would do imagery, and certain images were known to mean certain things. So that's why not only were there images instead of words for signs, like the prancing pony or something like that, wouldn't wouldn't say the prancing pony, it would just have a pony that looked like it was dancing. Um, Jeff said, oh snap, pay attention class. <laughs> we seek to entertain and educate the masses. I think you could probably just draw, I still think of an ox head with X's for eyes. And... I don't think the X's for eyes, I mean, I'm not trying to do a cartoon. Well, I'm just saying for a simple sign, I don't know. But I think, you know, now that we're talking about it, a silhouette, like it was something burned, like wood burnt or something like that, and a silhouette. Of a guy who's either a sword stabbing into an ox that's rearing or uh, like a spear lance. But, but, you know, because we're talking about it, we're thinking about it. I do want to keep it simple, but I don't want to make it look like it was drawn by 
The Simpsons artist. Nothing wrong with the Simpsons artist, but they didn't exist in medieval times, and that's not the deal on that. That's just not the style you're going through. I like yeah. Jeff says I like the silhouette idea. I like that you can spell silhouette, because I can't. Oh, I I can. And yeah, I do like that too. <laughs> the shadows are the light. That's what Jeff said. Wow, that, oh wow. I just asked uh, some AI to do one, just to see what they came up with. And uh, two, three, for one thing, it has five legs. <laughs> okay, so there's that. Uh, I'm not sure if it's male or female. Because it's got some shadowy dangle bits that I can't quite make out. <laughs> it is. This is kind of nightmare fuel. <laughs> and then, yeah. Once again, AI fails. <laughs> How many toes? How many toes does the Gordox None. It's got all others. <laughs> it just, yeah. It's, it, oh my. You know, like those MC Escher things with like the different like stairs and it all leads to like you know it's like you know the the top of one stair is the bottom of the next, but with, that one is on top of of the one that is on top of the one you started with. You know, so the perspective is just played around with. Yep. It's kind of like that, but it's an ox. Like, it's it's going <laughs> two different directions at once. Oh, it's got two tails, too. At least two tails. Yeah, this is like some. This is the sign for the Gordox pub, uh, and, and Chernobyl, I think. <laughs> That's what this is. Wow. Okay, now you gotta share it. <laughs> oh, hold on a second. I mean, because now everybody else wants to know what it looks like. being slow. Hold on. I thought you were just making a cow sound. <laughs> ah. Thanks. Well. <laughs> Not my... Part of the problem is, is I have stuff, like, I don't, you know, when I'm sharing my screens, I just get nervous. Well, you uh, have to choose which one that you're sharing, so. I know, that's not the problem. The problem is, I don't, 
I have 8,000 tabs open, and I don't like people knowing what I'm looking at. No one needs to know about my addiction to my, my little pony. So, brownie porn? <laughs> that is not... <laughs> not... Have... Fur tube? <laughs> Furry tube? I was just being slow. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. Oh my god, this is taking forever. Part of the pro- gosh. Oh, well, I have too many tabs. Oh god. I still haven't even saved the file, which is what I'm trying to do. Alright, whatever. Okay. Now, let's see. Oh. I'm only slightly annoyed with how slow this is being, because, you know. Dog! I got a cold nose on my elbow. Probably has wrist places. Okay. Let's see if I got it. Alright. Okay. So, hold on a second. Okay, present, uh, share screen, and then, all right, I don't know if this will share or not, let me see, there it is. So yeah, it's got like one, two, three, four, five. Right now, it looks like there's two bulls running, <laughs> like one run into someone, one of them side. I, I don't guess. Know what the fuck that is in front. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know either, man. What the hell is that? That's that's <laughs> a horn, screwdriver, drill. <laughs> it's a medieval multi tool, you know. Like oh, yeah, have. like like it's a Swiss Army Plow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the name of my next band, the Swiss Army Plow. <laughs> anyway. There. Yeah, just... And on my screen, because I've got, you know, this big screen, it is... Yeah, that is just wrong. <laughs> I mean, it's an interesting style. If you were trying to uh, get inspiration, I think it could work as an well, inspiration piece. But you know, yeah, that... Talked about that. That's, that's really what that type of stuff is good for. But, yeah, you know, throwing out a couple of ideas and then taking those ideas and making them better. But yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't use it as a book cover. <laughs> yeah. I don't suppose I'm looking for something to use as a book cover, but I'm. <clears throat> yeah, I agree. That was, that was some nightmare fuel. Not for mass consumption. Ah. Oh. I have way too much crap open. Does that take you back to high school? What? You never know how dirty your room is until you have friends over. <laughs> oh, yeah, I suppose. I just meant I had too much, like... I'm... 
like a pack rat when it comes to tabs. Like I'm just always scared of closing one. Like I don't like making bookmarks because I never look at my bookmarks because I don't, you know. So I'll have the same tabs open for weeks and never touch them. And then eventually it gets to the point where I'm like, why do I even have this still open? I've got bookmarks for my. Uh, uh, tab bar at the top. Um, yeah. I don't know what it's called right now, but that's that's what my bookmarks are for. Like uh, StreamYard, I don't want to have StreamYard open all the time. Now, this should be cleverly disguised as me knowing what I'm doing. Oh, yeah. I think that's what I need to do with that other piece. I'll uh, take some time and lay out a... Gordox pub idea. I want to do it so it looks like it's hanging from a shield, like like it would be in a bar, you know, or in a tavern. Yeah. Like it's supposed to be, you know. One thing I don't like about this tray is they're all loose. Or they're stuck together and they should be loose. this little brush for details. I don't think they do them anymore. I'd love to be able to just buy a replacement one. The bristles are all coming off to the side. Notice how little water it takes to make a huge mess. Um, okay. Like, it doesn't take very much fluid to spread out all over the van place. Oh, yeah, that's true.
So why'd you decide to go with the watercolor tonight? Well, uh, one thing, it's, it's been a while since I've used any watercolor. Okay. Um, another thing is this brush. It's, uh, it's an inking brush, but it's also a watercolor brush, really. Okay. And I haven't tried it. <laughs> really as simple as that. I wanted to give it a shot. And yeah, like I'm I'm trying to keep pretty much warmed up or not estranged from any particular mediums. Like yeah. all the mediums that I'm using, I want, it, I want them to be still familiar, like at any time. I'm not worried about whether or not I have to relearn it. <clears throat> because like we talked about before, every other, every medium has its own particular Peculiar peculiarities. Um, watercolors is actually like I keep hearing watercolors supposed to be hard, and maybe it's because I've I did it for a while because that's really all I could do for a while in the hospital, but. I've, I've never really felt it was all that hard. It's just a matter of mastering your consistency. Okay. Would you not agree? I don't know. I have never thought about it that way. Um... Well, it's the, the consistency of water per... Uh, water per pigment ratio. You're not stupid. You picked up a watercolor set yet? Oh, I was sneezing. So I, oh, the first one, I barely got to the mute button. Oh. <laughs> like, I wasn't even sure if I had actually hit it or not. I was, like, I had to look. Like, because as I was clicking mute, I was sneezing. And I was, you know, so my eyes were closing. <laughs> It was the ultimate race. Could he click the mute button before he sneezed? So, uh, yeah, anyway. Hey, we have a new visitor. Uh, Thorello? I hope I, sp I pronounced hey. that right. Let's 
says th all right thrillo awesome so yeah It's always good when I can pronounce things. <laughs> Gorilla says cool style. Thanks. I'm actually playing. <laughs> and this is, I'm trying to cartoon a little bit, but I don't think I'm very good at cartooning. says you're doing it great bro okay i would say this one is more cartoonish than the uh last one that you tried to cartoon which one would that be the, the concept art that you did last stream that you finished up oh well that's that's comic style cartooning not Cartooning, okay. cartooning. This is not really cartooning, cartooning, but it's cartooner. <laughs> I'm sure that's the superlative. <laughs> I'm, I'm not so. I'm, I will trust your judgment. God, there was a. Oh, man, do I hate it when this happens, too. There was a question on that quiz bowl thing, and I know the word, and I know how to pronounce the word. But that doesn't mean my tongue was going to pronounce the word. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I know what it's supposed to sound like. I recognize the word. But my lips and my tongue were just like, nah, not today, man. sometimes that's good for students to see because they realize that you know they don't have to be perfect but still it's annoying see that's what this channel is about <laughs> you don't have to be perfect just persistent oh god last night I had this thing I woke up and somewhere between the bathroom and, and my bed I had this idea like a like a saying and and persistent was as I had three P words like persistent practice and maybe it was perseverance which I thought was about the same thing as persistent or persistence and I don't remember but I go I had the thought and I thought oh that's a really good like all of it kind of had this thing about you know just trying to improve and not worrying about perfection um and I don't know why I was thinking about it between, you know, waking up and going to the bathroom and then coming back to bed. But then when I woke up this morning, I was like, oh, yeah. And I was trying to tell my wife and I couldn't remember what all three of the words were. And I was so mad I didn't write it down. It's not like the Army's four Ps, right? What's the Army's four Ps? Uh, preparation prevents pitch poor performance. Oh, yeah, that was, that's good. <laughs>
Have you ever seen um, Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome? Well, yeah, I've seen them all. Okay, well, you know, I just just gotta ask. So, Tina Turner's character, Auntie Entity, which they never say Entity in the film, but whatever. Why does she let him live at the end of it? Oh, spoiler alert. <laughs> For a, you know, a movie that's several decades old. Yeah, you probably don't want to admit how old it is. <laughs> uh, it's from the 80s. Yeah. I'm going to guess 85. That's my guess. Off the top of my head, I'm going to say 85. Let's look. I was right, 1985. I was thinking about uh, a character design, and the uh, there there is a character in that film that I thought. Oh, sorry, Jeff, if I ruined it for you. I didn't tell you how it ends. I just said that she lets him live. That's it. That's all. I ain't talk about the big explosions, you know, whatever. But, uh, well, you know, the, the real secret spoiler of the plot is how much picture's in there. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and my thought was, all right, so, because I, like, I even looked it up online. Like, I was like, well, maybe there'll be like a video or something I can find that can. Make it, make it make sense. Because, you know, in 85, when that movie came out, I would have been uh, eight, seven or eight, like around there. So, like, I guess the general consensus is she respects his skills and uh, killing him won't change the fact that the little guy, master the guy, got away. Like if she can waste the, the, you know, the effort to kill Max, or just let him go because it doesn't matter anymore. And I'm okay with that theory, I guess. But I don't know. Part of me thinks she really didn't like that little guy. She could use him, but she didn't like him, and she didn't like being challenged by him. Oh, yeah, so definitely. She had to make a show of going after him, but hey, the guy got off. You saw, I tried to get him back. Oh, well. Some of that, I would kind of like to see what the... Like, whatever happened to Barter Town. You know what I mean? Like, that's just kind of an interesting... And and the because you know it doesn't show up in in Furiosa, or no because Fur even though they're supposed to be Mad Max films all together in continuity, there's no continuity in the Mad Max film. <clears throat> you look from the first one to the second one; doesn't make sense how they regressed. They had stuff, and then all of a sudden they didn't. Well, that's because in the first one they're supposed to be running out of. Uh, water and oil. Well, in the second one, it was all about fuel. Right, because again, they're running out. Right, but in the first one, they had fuel, his family lived a happy life until the bikers come and hit them. <laughs> oh, spoiler alert. <laughs> Let's ruin every film. <laughs> P.S. They shoot the dog in Old Yeller. <laughs> uh, I was just about to say, they did shoot the fucking dog. I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wasn't uh, talking about Old Yeller. <laughs> I don't know. I think there's some continuity because, like, the first film is right at the onset of societal collapse and the second film is supposed to be pretty much like 
it's all like they've had nuclear wars at that point. Like that's hinted at that point. There have been nuclear wars or a nuclear war. It's hinted at, but it's never really definitive, definitively spoken. Ah, uh, see, there's not, there's no radioactive areas that they can't go in. In the second one, well. It's just a wasteland, and then the third one is the lack of water, so it's not even about fuel. Yeah. But then you get to Fury Road, and you know, you have the bullet farmers. And then you yeah, got but the... it's about water, it's about he controls everybody because he controls the water. Right, which again is a continuation of what happened in the in the third one to some extent. I mean, again, they're they're worried about water. Like you can I watch that like, was cool. big shit was fucking nothing. Well, I get that, but yeah. again, that's both that's of those things are from the beginning. Thing. It's just What's getting that? worse and worse and worse. Uh. That's why I always wanted to see what happened to Barter Town. Like, all right, now that the master guy is gone, does the town die? Does, you know, I don't know. Aside from the stylistic clothing options that I've never quite understood, because most, I was like, that doesn't really make sense why you would do half of that stuff. The, uh, I don't know, I mean, it's just, it's an interesting take on, on the collapse of society. And I've always liked the idea, you know, the first one, it's at the beginning of the collapse. And the second one, it's further along into the collapse. And the third one, maybe we're coming back. It's gotten bad, but maybe we're starting to come back together. And then that just seems like it all went to hell. So, I don't know. Yeah, it, it, it didn't give me that feel. It gave me the only connection really in those movies to me was actually Mad Max. Yeah. I didn't feel like there was really connectivity but i mean except for they all have whacked out bad guys and mad max in them like in fury road mad max is uh <clears throat> hearing the voices of his daughter and all this other shit. yeah that was supposed to be like somebody like, that he tried to save and cut it well, it's supposed to be either his wife or his kid. Like, I, I read some stuff on when it first came out, but... I mean, I don't know. It's too late in the game to start having him be wacko over stuff that's already happened, you know? Yeah. We've already, we've already got an expectation of who he is as a character. He, he stopped caring about anything because of his wife and kids. He wasn't hallucinating his wife and kids. Although he was envisioning their bodies. Well, that's meant to be the scale work, right? Yeah. Jeff says the only continuity is the progression of masochism. All right. 
I mean, I like the progression of dairy farms in those films. So. <laughs> if you know, you know. Well, you know, one of the first films to make snacking on wet dog food desirable. <laughs> <laughs> That's the worst part of it, right? The wet dog food. <laughs> yeah, if I had to choose, you like could almost, you could almost stomach like dog snacks or whatever. But yeah, if someone had a gun to my head and said I can eat a bowl full of dry dog food or a bowl full of wet dog food, but I'm eating one of them or eating a bullet. I would eat the dry dog food. Well, you know, if you're hungry enough, you'll eat whatever you can eat, right? But Well, that is true, too. But I think that was the illustration, but it's just it's like <laughs> that helicopter pilot licking his lips looking at the dog food. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't even work for me. Oh, the cow would be nice. And like magic, poof, here's the cow. And I gotta let it dry before I can put some color in it. Now that the values are laid out. I think I can do that. So, what color do you think this area will be? Hey, Faith. Say that again? I said, hey, Faith. You gotta have Faith. Oh, Faith is there. Well, you said, what color should his hair be? Hey, Faith. I was like, what? I don't get it. <laughs> So I was confused. I mean, typically you see dwarves with like either reddish brown or like dark colors, muddy. So you don't think there could be a blonde dwarf? Oh, I'm sure there could be. <laughs> and I've gone dark. Why have I gone dark? And there right. I am again. Okay. You're not dark to me. I can see you. Well, the screen in the stream, if I could rhyme a little, went black, whereas the one down below... You know, the backstage one was, was still good, so I don't know if I was really black or what. So, at least some muddy colors. Which just basically means I'm going to mix this with the <laughs> dirty water. Nobody's suggesting any colors yet. I should reddish brown. Okay, nobody but red. And that's why I'm doing some light brown because you know I can play with that. I don't know, maybe he's got pink hair with a green beard and you know, he's got a little Ukraine pin on his shoulder. No, no we're not anachronistic. <laughs> Be cool. 
Make him a punk dwarf. <sighs> I just had a, I just had a bad humor moment. <laughs> Jeff said I'm right. I mean, those weren't the exact words he typed, but I mean, really. He said, historically, Ginger makes sense. Well, the reason I just didn't jump in to going, hey, we're going to do this because he's a ginger is because then we'll really confuse the Viking enthusiasts. Yeah, you're talking about the Ukraine button, and my brain's like, short lives matter. <laughs> like, that, that could work very bad for that. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's kind of double entendre-ish. I don't know, that might be kind of neat. Kind of have some, uh, I don't know. There might be some fun there. Yeah, you know, nobody has a sense of humor anymore, so I don't know if I want to go there just because of that. Well, you know. Uh, that's kind of the sad part. Nobody has a sense of humor, and then you can't. It's like, well, all right. Right, it's very hard to. Do anything humorous when nobody can accept anything without finding something wrong with it. Yeah, like I knew that's one of those comments that I'm I'm probably gonna probably gonna get somebody pissed off by saying it. Yeah. It just struck me so funny. Just because of all that, you know. Jeff said his mom actually told me that he's really funny. What? Jeff said, my mom actually told me I'm really funny. That was my Jeff voice. Oh. See? Because, like, Jeff set up this beautiful opportunity for uh, your mom joke, and I can't say it. <laughs> you know, I don't know if Jeff can handle it, and I don't want to offend Jeff. I can't say that's not what his mom told me, but no, because that would be wrong. Instead, I just have to think it in my head. <laughs> See, now you went a different way with it than I would have. <laughs> 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 I guess that's often the cause. <laughs> I gotta be like, yeah, your mom said you're really funny, really funny smelling, really funny looking. Wow. <laughs> I always find it particularly funny when one of my boys does a your mom joke to his brother. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> Part of that stems from my younger boy got on this kick that his older brother was adopted. Just took that whole dynamic and flipped it, right? Because normally it's the older siblings that tell the younger siblings, nah, you were adopted. We found you in the dumpster, or whatever. And 
Yeah. So my my younger son started doing that to my older son. And so then whenever he does a your mom joke, it's because he always like, no, you're adopted. So. My mom told me I was funny. I mean, she used to always say, well, aren't you funny? I mean, that, that's saying it, right? That's the same. That, that's not sarcasm at all. Well, not her fault, but you took her literally. You're supposed to trust your mom. <laughs> uh, I always find my boy is going to play your mom jokes with me. And I'm always like, you you want me to call up your, your grandmother and tell her what you said? Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or I like to flip it right back up and be like, I forget exactly what my son said today because he did one of them today. And I was like, well, you know, grandma used to get around. <laughs> And to watch my son's eyes just bulge and he just retched. It was great. kids that uh, are on the team, they're twins and they're both they are big boys like they're taller than I am and uh, that's my that's my general baseline if you're taller than me, you're tall yeah right so it was basically like those two kids, and then me and then I think the other teacher and then it kind of Probably to my younger son, who's taller than my older son. Uh, and then it kind of trickled on down, right? And we took a short bus. And you keep uh, saying that. And you know, it's hard not to laugh every time. Hey, I thought it was right? hilarious because every school took a short bus. Here it is, Quiz Bowl, nothing but short buses. I was like, does nobody see the irony? But anyway. Hmm. So, you know, we're on the way to lunch. I ended up and I had to share a seat with my son, which I wasn't too thrilled with because we're both large people. And I just played the whole teacher prerogative card. I was like, I don't care. On the way back, I'm getting a seat by myself. I don't care. <laughs> like, I'm the adult. Gosh darn it. And then they were, you know, like, we already had two students who were sitting with each other. And then we decided, I just said, you know, I rattled off the two short kids that were left. I said, they can sit together. I was like, why do we have to sit together? I was like, because you're short. Because you had a chance to be tall and you squandered it. And then the two twins were like, yeah, learn to grow. <laughs> just... <laughs> Uh, I was like, I can't believe, you know, nobody ever wants to be short. They always want to be tall. So suffer. Mr. Peter Dinklage. <laughs> Learn to be tall. That guy has an amazing voice. It's unfair how good of a voice he has.
got some acting chops too. Yeah, he does. <laughs> The day my younger son discovered he was taller than his brother, the amount of short jokes that came out of that kid, I, I was just amazed. Just like every comment he twisted into something about being short. And it was just, it was kind of magical just to watch this kid work. <laughs> and of course, his brother, being the older one and now the smaller one, was not pleased. So I was working on some character design stuff and uh, I had an idea for a character and I was like, all right, because and I was maybe because you were drawing comic book art stuff or concepts. It's got me thinking and uh, I had an idea and I wasn't sure if it was one word or two. Like I wasn't sure what kind of compound noun it was. So I looked it up, as one does, right? And then I find out... Or just make it up. Well, yeah, I could. But then I'm looking, like, one of the things that pops up is, is this term racist? And I was like, what? Uh, and then it's like, yeah, if you're a white person, you, you, it's racist. And I was like, what? <laughs> and I was just, I don't know. Like, it wasn't the N-word, obviously, because that's not a compound noun. I was like, I, got, I, I just, okay. I, I don't know. So I scrapped that idea for the name of the character. I did not scrap the character. I was like, no, I still want a character. And I want her to be black. Like, I think it's a cool character idea. But I was like, that's kind of stupid that like here I am trying to I mean I'm not that I have any particular I don't know I mean it wasn't like I was trying to check a box I just had an idea you know what I mean and uh, I'm like oh, I almost gave up on the idea because of that and I'm like that's just stupid so I'm gonna have fewer characters of color because I'm worried about stupid term like terminology that if I was the, a different skin color I would have no problem with I was like, this is dumb so why do it I don't know Judah welcome to the Gord Ox Pub and yeah, if you welcome. think the music it sounds familiar um, Rich and I have also thought the music sounds familiar to various things but <laughs> Rich, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Is it in the description down below? It is. Aha. So you can actually check it out. All of my music that I play <clears throat> uh, is listed in the description box. Whether or not I'm actually playing all of it or not. In case we switch, right? Because I will, because I get sick of hearing the same thing. And Judah, I hope I pronounced your name correctly, because if I didn't, I apologize. Hey, 
think that's too blonde? Does it need more red? I don't care. Does it need more brown? Does it need more red? It's your dwarf. I don't care. If you make it too red, it'll look like he needs to have Lucky Charms. So, you know, kind of yeah, careful. You switch. Oh, you're muted. Yeah. Well, yeah, because right. there's noise going on on this end, and I didn't want to make that interrupting what's going on. Wow. I didn't realize that killed the music, too, though. It didn't kill the music. I switched down. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, you switched the music, and we lost all of our viewers. Oh, now we have a viewer again. The Lurker.
royalty free music. Yep, that Jeff picked in two minutes ago. It was just blocked by my desk. Ah, oh. when I sit like this, I couldn't see the comment. I apologize. That and I was doing me some thinking, so. Surprised you heard it over, you didn't hear it over the music, actually.
Did you cut your paper in half because you wanted to make a little drawing or a little painting? What? It was a bad joke about a dwarf being a little painting. Ah. I'm sorry about it, I'm getting red. Did you hear about the, uh... One of you are going to do bad deal. Oh, oh. Just wait. Did you hear about that church that, uh, worships a very specific type of blue? It's the Church of Scientology. <laughs> well, I, I guess we didn't go to Tom Cruise, though.
lost all our viewers. No, that's because I suck. <laughs> if you suck, you would be pulling them in. Yeah. What? Nothing. <laughs> we were at a basketball game, my wife and I. We were sitting over uh, in front of the student section. Oh, Jeff's there. Well, now it says you're back. Good job, Jeff. But we were, we were sitting around in, in the stands, uh, kind of over in the student section, because by the band, and my wife likes to be by the band. And when the opposing team comes out, um, our student section always turns their back to them. And so they're staring at us, and we're sitting there, and we're eating skittles and popcorn. And one of them, uh, my wife knew, because he's on the swim team with my boys, and she, she, she went like this with a piece of popcorn and tried to get him to, she calls it baby birdie, but I don't think that's quite right. She just tried to throw it into his mouth, but he just wouldn't do it. And I looked down two students, to one of the students I have in class, and I was like, Kylie will do it. And as soon as she heard me say her name, she looks over, my wife lifts up the popcorn and she just opens her mouth wide. And I was like, yeah, told you. She has a hard time keeping her mouth shut. <laughs> oh, who would have thought I'd be that girl's Cheerios, I swear. But whatever. We got free popcorn. Which girl? <laughs> the girl who can't keep her mouth shut. Well, because, you know, you were talking about that and your wife, so. <laughs> no. My wife is a lady. Uh, that's one thing I've gotten better at as I got older. I, I just I have more fun with the students now, just because like I I still have a reputation for being some super mean teacher, but I'm like I don't get where that really comes from. Like I have the most lax policy on makeup work. I don't penalize it at all. Uh, I don't, you know, like, I let people make stuff up, redo stuff, all kinds of things. And my big thing is, I try to teach the students that discretion is, a, you know, is an important skill. Like, you know, if you want to drink pop in the middle of class, you know, maybe you should crack it open in the middle of class when it's all quiet and everybody hears it. No, you just, you do that before you come in. You just kind of keep it tucked away. You know, if you're going to eat chips, have them open in your back, in your backpack. And you're just reaching in every once in a while. You're not making a big show of it. And, you know, just you be discreet. You know? I can allow all kinds of things if you don't draw my attention to it. But if you force me to pay attention to it, then I gotta deal with it. I don't wanna deal with anything. Or like, I'll get kids that are like, can I take this phone call with my mom? And I'm always like, uh, you mean you have to go to the bathroom? No, I gotta take this call. No, you have to go to the bathroom. Oh, yeah. Like, just think it through. Like, you know, if you're gonna, if you think it's appropriate to take a phone call in the middle of class, I'm not fixing that. Uh, the best I can do is get you to leave the room so that you're not disrupting everybody else. That's the other thing. Like, if you ask to go to the bathroom in my class, there's the door. I don't care. If you're gone all hour because you decided. Being in the bathroom was better than being in my classroom. All right, if that's where you're getting your education, that's where you're getting it. Like, I, just, I don't believe in forcing people to do a whole bunch of this stuff. I'm more a free market, you know? Either you're going to find value in what I'm doing or you're not. And if you don't find any value in it, 
don't bother the people who do hard value. Right? I really do like that color that you got on his hair. <laughs> <laughs> wow, come on that shit again. Dark all of a sudden, your computer died? Yeah, if I go dark all of a sudden, I didn't get enough charge before it died. Because I have to keep, I have to keep adjusting the, it's the code to the, the adapter that charges it. The strip that it's plugged into, that part is particularly weak. And if I'm painting or paying attention to everything else but this, you know. That's the only problem I ever had with these watercolors. That I paint so long when I'm mixing with the light. I mean, that would give you more than one light, but paint so long when you mix with the light. And there's no true white anymore. So this is charging, so let's see. I was watching a video just a quick little like YouTube short or something or maybe something on Facebook like a reel but it was a girl or a woman I don't know female of some type uh, now you were on the specific when it came to your wife well you know <laughs> I, it wasn't of the person but it was a, definitely a female voice and feminine hands and they were doing watercolors this, well, I think it was watercolor. They didn't actually say it. That wasn't the point. But they had two uh, uh, killer whale drawings. Simple killer whales. Thing one just done twice. And uh, she was talking about how she was told never to use black. In right? The paint. Mix your own black, right? No, that wasn't her point. Her point was never use black. Um, and, you know, like, if, 
So she painted one. They're not true black, right? Right. She so painted one with black, and she painted the other one by building up the color with like dark blues and stuff. And you know, whatever. And I just thought that was kind of interesting. That I don't think I was ever taught don't use black, but uh, I think it, I was just it taught. Is, it is taught. Well, um, I believe you. I was so, just well. The lesson I learned was: Why are you spending money buying black when you can just make it with what you already have? Which well, resonated with me because well, I am a Midwestern dad now. You know, not spending money is one of my core beliefs. So, there's, there's an answer to that, too. <laughs> okay. The first answer as to why you don't just use solid black is no color in nature is really solid black. Right. Okay. So, it's either a dark, dark, dark brown with shadows or something similar to that. Um, but part two is the black that I have is either very, very, very dark brown or very, very, very dark blue. So they just did it for you. Yeah, well, you're paying for that privilege. <clears throat> and it's of not course. that bad or that hard to. You're, you're doing do. the same thing when you go to McDonald's. You're doing the same thing when you get a soda. <laughs> You're paying for the privilege of somebody mixing the stuff up ahead of time for you. That's, that's okay. That's true, except um, for McDonald's also, if I were to go out and buy all the pieces, that's actually, you know, that could be more expensive if, you know, I just want one hamburger. You have to make several hamburgers to make the cost more. So if you want to feed your family... But you'll have the stuff to make several hamburgers if you buy that. Well... Yeah, but again, I don't know. I mean, I, to me, it's, it's, it's no, the argument's the same, really. The well, only difference is that if I have pre made black, uh, I gen generally don't use solid black anyway. If I'm using that black, you'll see I'm mixing it. So I can use that black to darken up my brown. Yeah. I can darken my values with it, or because I've already got a pre mixed black, <clears throat> I can add a little white and get different from the gray. Without trying to have to mix this much blue, this much brown, or this much green, or this much, you know, orange, or whatever. Orange, green, blue. Oh, yeah, I just. Well, that's, that's the answer, is because you're, you're well, using it. If you're using it right, you're not just using uh, black, you're using black in coordination with something else. Well, nothing yeah, but here you're talking I about do. making a shade darker. Nothing that I think is, is pure black, nothing. Right, but again, you're talking about using it as an additive to other colors. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm using it as And she was talking more about using it as black. Well, no, she was talking about using other colors to make one. It, that's what she was told was the was the better method. And yeah, okay, so the person I'm, I'm telling you, like, the person that caught them, and the reason that you didn't hear about it is, that goes back to when they didn't have black. You had to mix it yourself. That's like, for instance, Prussian blue. Yeah. Prussian blue didn't exist with before 1704. So you're not going to use Prussian blue. And hundreds of years before that, there was a color called Egyptian blue that the recipe was lost on. But in the Renaissance, they didn't have straight black. They didn't have black dye for so long, so clothes were actually dark, dark, dark brown or dark, dark, dark blue, which is what they still are. But it's a combination of the brown and blue that you can get that black from. So the traditionalists, like you're talking about, what she's talking about, 
or you're mixing your darker, darker colors like that on your own, so you don't have to rely on a tube of black or whatever. But they're they're also not using black; they're, they're mixing it in with something else. It just saves you a step, and it's available now. So why don't you use it? It's the same thing as like uh, this guy. Kind of sound completely different, but it's the same thing. A distortion pedal. So you're playing on the guitar, and you want to hit the distortion pedal, and you get crunch. Well, they didn't have crunch in the Middle Ages. <laughs> That's true. They, they, uh, they have false harmonics. They have what they call intronics, false harmonics. But, um, some people said that, that that's cheating, right? Yeah. Uh, when you listen to, say, Van Halen, Hot the Teacher, right? Right. Alex uses drum triggers, which basically are recordings that throw a kind of echo to the beat. So you hit the beat one time or whatever, and you get many more. That's how you, he gets the extra beats. Because he's using drum triggers. And a lot of drummers that I know that are purists are like, that's, that's cheating. A lot of guitarists don't want to use like a seven string guitar because that's cheating, you know? And it's not cheating, it's just a different available uh, method. So you have to, you can use different uh, you can use different applications that you couldn't use before because they exist now. Yesy, I hope that's how you say that, says, is that Hall? Ha? Huh? The what? Yesy, from YouTube, who, by the way, welcome to the Gordon Club. Says Ha. <laughs> okay, well, I couldn't see if it was, are those exclamation points? Those are real tiny. I'm old, apparently. Although I have really good eyesight, but I'm looking through a desk. But still. <laughs> the thing is, is, I don't know what that means <laughs> in conjunction with what that is related to. What's funny is, so, yeah, there's a, I don't know, I can't even, yeah. Okay, hot. AKA hi? Okay. Oh. <laughs> oh, and thought we hit an A accidentally. But hi! <laughs> Hello. It means I have a student that has a name very people. similar to Yesi, but it's like if Mike Tyson tried to say it. What? So, I'm assuming, and what looks like, and I really do apologize if I misread this tiny picture. But Yessi on here, Y E Yet or Y E S S I. I have a student who has a name very similar, but it's pronounced like Mike Tyson would pronounce Yessi. So Yeffy? Yeffy. Are you sure that student's not just messing with it? I promise. <laughs> if your sister has a, a, a unique name as well. And as a father of a child who has a unique name, I appreciate it. Although, well, I never thought Thaddeus was a unique name. Wit, I knew was relatively unique. But Thaddeus? That's from the Bible. But It's also in the Stephen King book. I know! That's the first thing I thought of when you said his name was Thad. Like Thaddeus Bobot? Yeah, that was like one of my favorite Stephen King books. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. As it turns really out, cool. he kind of rewrote that theme a hundred times, but. I like, I like that, that, that book. That, that one is a pretty solid book, I think, start to finish. But. Yeah, because he stole the electric machine. What? 
that he stole the Lexus machine. <laughs> but yeah, Thaddeus, I just, I'm always shocked by. Alexis it's also comes from John D. McDonald. I was, uh, I grew up, and the county I grew up in, Kosciuszko, is named after Thaddeus Kosciuszko. And I'm like, yeah, there's Thaddeus, it's all over the place. But they're just off. And but people act like it's the weirdest name ever. Now, Wit, uh, yeah, I don't, when it, when that's the whole name. I, there aren't a lot of those. Technically, it's mentioned in Of Mice and Men. He doesn't appear in the book, but he's mentioned in the book. Uh, he's now been mentioned in a Stephen King book. There's a guy by the name of Wit, and one of them. Again, I think he just gets mentioned real quick. And, uh, oh, so you're naming your kids after Stephen King characters. No, the Stephen King character was <laughs> long after my child was born. <laughs> Now, Thaddeus Beaumont was around before Thaddeus, but I don't care. <laughs> there were lots of Thaddeuses. And to be fair, you know, like, well, I would have had no yeah, problem okay. naming my child Roland. What? I would have named one of my children Roland. I would have mind. Oh, Roland. okay. I thought you said, I thought you said Roma. And I was like, wait, what? what? <laughs> you know, last in the line of L. Yeah, you're talking about, yeah, the gunslinger, right? Yeah. Would have had no problem with that. My wife actually suggested, like, this is, I, I, I promise, this was legit her, her offering. Before we settled on Thaddeus, my wife legitimately said why don't we name him Getty now my what? wife is not the Rush fan I am and oh, even Getty? I was like uh, no we're not going to do that to him nope like I just there's no way well there's no way he's going to get me anyway yeah it was Gary so it's like yeah I'm not I'm not going to be that guy. There was a student I had years ago that was named Rasslin, like from the Dragonlance Chronicle. And I just was like, oh, gosh, that's something. I mean, it's cool that your parents have read this, obviously. And, you know, I like the books too, but wow, I don't think I'd want to name anyone out of that book, but I guess I'm just not that big of a fan of anything. Uh, you guys got a book more. It's, it's got two middle names, and one of them is Matram. Huh. <clears throat> and that's Mac the Thong from The Wheel of Time. Because Matt Cathon reminded me of my buddy Eugene. Yeah. Same kind of troubled spirit. <laughs> <clears throat> so it was kind of a little nod to him. That's cool. But he has four names because we knew it was the last one. Uh, had to use them up. Yeah, so like then and uh, his first name is Elias which also for me was from the Wheel of Time way early on when Karen was learning that he was Dr. Wolf. There was a guy in Elias so who was kooky. But he spelled it different because, we, well, he didn't spell it like that spelling because both my wife and I liked the name, we just liked it different. Well, 
Most of my tweets got one name and then a biblical name for the middle yeah. name. But, uh, Kate doesn't. When, when we were, when my wife and I were arguing about Thaddeus' name, I called up my uncle to kind of do a, just to make sure I wasn't crazy. And my uncle has a very unique name. I've never met another one in my entire life. And the only time I've ever seen the name besides my uncle was on a tombstone from my family. Well, it's a family name, but it's Burley, B-E-R-L-Y. And I've never seen it. What? I've never seen that name spelled V. V is in Victor. Oh, I thought you said V. No, V is in Victor. Burley, kind of like Verily, okay. but no. Yeah. So, I thought you were saying Burley. No, no. So, I call my uncle up, and I, you know, I, I kind of give him the context that we're kind of arguing about stuff, about the name. And he goes, well, whatever you do, do not burden that child with my name. <laughs> He's like, let that one die with me. I was like, all right, whatever. But my feeling of the thing was my wife wanted to call Thaddeus Tad. And I did not I just, yeah. I just couldn't I guess I'm with you on that one. I just couldn't picture him as an adult. You know what I mean? Like I, Oh. And that was my hang up. I said like, I just can't take that name seriously. And Yeah. The only one time I've ever seen and this stuck up bricks and, and uh, soap boxes. Oh, yeah, that's okay. So. Well, you know, Chad Williams, but still, he's a stuck up brick. <laughs> well, anyway. I can so, say uh, that because I've talked to him. <laughs> he I, basically uh, told me that I didn't have a right to an opinion about a book. Unless I uh, graduated from all the classes that he had graduated from. Oh, God. Like, I didn't have a right to be a, a reader and a fan unless I had, you know, a degree in well, that's writing the or whatever. Well, but, yeah, you know, like, whatever. And he's, he's posing the whole, so when did you stop reading? your wife question which is oh. it, it's an impossible question right and he calls it a rhetorical question and it's not a rhetorical question it's an impossible question you can't answer it without ad admitting that you had that meeting your wife so if you right. say yeah if you say anything you're basically admitting that you're being your wife and i was like so when was the last time you had a wife <laughs> oh. You know, people sometimes just have to be superior. Yeah, I don't get it. Well, you know, I kind of get it because it's that stupid competitive spirit that's still built into us that. Um, that's how we think. We think that we have to be the best, and we think that we have to be the best at something. Remember, I was talking about like uh, my kids' guidance counselor when they graduated. One of them was got up and said that if you if you don't find the car, you'll never be anybody. Nobody will ever remember you unless you have a car. And it kind of pissed me off because uh, a lot of people that I remembered didn't have a cause when they started out, they created a cause as they went along. Yeah. And spend their lives looking for some causes or causes or 
uh, pick up on somebody else's, you know, frog that they dropped is really kind of unfair for a generation of graduating students to think that they'll never be anybody. Like, literally, why would you tell them as a guidance counselor that you're never going to be anything? Ever, at all. You know, why would you ever, ever say that? As a guidance counselor. Well, kind of, kind of the job. I remember my wife, who uh, does the books for several companies, and she's done that. Like, she's, she's definitely uh, done the books for people. And, uh, you know, like, there's math to be done in the house. I prefer to let her, I mean, unless it starts getting really, really like I've taken calculus in college. She's never taken calculus. Not like that. So, you know, like I guess I have a higher education, but for most things in life, I will defer to my wife when it comes to math. In fact, if my wife had taken those classes, I'm sure she'd be better at it than me. She just hasn't had the class. But her guidance counselor told her, don't worry, honey. Girls just aren't good at math. What? Yeah. What year did your guidance counselor live? <laughs> well, what's funny is... Were they retiring at that time? This woman... I, I'm pretty certain was a lesbian. And... I'm just like... Like, you're well, just going to have a girl? Well, what's funny is... Like, I can't you know, like... My wife was lazy, and she'll admit to that. But, like, she was, she was like an algebra two or something like that. And she, uh, the, the teacher told her, because she had just failed to do so much homework. He's like, I, you can get an A on everything, and you still can't pass. And so she said, okay, can I just sit in the back of the room and read? And the guy said, fine. But... When he would have a sub, he would tell the sub to have Rhonda teach it, because Rhonda could. And, you know, it's just one of those things where it's like, part of me understands that that thing about, you know, there's no way you can pass because you're just being a lazy turd. I get it. But then when they say, to say that, look, she already knows it, let her teach it, you know, that's just crazy. But, like, if I thought a kid could teach my class, I don't care what kind of stuff he's turned in. I would just say, yeah, you at least passed. Like, what, what is the point of saying you fail just because you didn't? I don't know. If I know you can do it, I should pass you. Like, you don't need to get an A. But, you know, also lacks of basics about work ethic. But, you know. I figure if I know you can do it, you should have a passing grade. But those were the days where you could say things to kids, like, you know. I remember one, I there was a teacher at the middle school, uh, he told my wife, who was not my wife at the time, <laughs> obviously, that, uh, he figured she'd be pregnant and have to drop out before she ever graduated. He just said that to her in class. Like, oh. I said that was my history teacher. Yeah, well, I, I just can't believe it. I mean, it's I've so my, at least said bad stuff, but... All, all my history teachers were the ones that inspired me, actually. History and, and, uh, and English. Those are the ones that actually inspired me to do better, to do better, to stick around. To... Oh, I think Jeff was saying the exact opposite. He said, his history teacher definitely passed him, but he probably shouldn't have in terms of my, of him applying himself. So he knew you could do it. So you don't need an A, you just 
need to say, yeah, this kid can do it. My, my, my history teacher really inspired me. The standing was really inspired me. But so, we're on that today too, you know? It's like, <laughs> you can tell that they, they did their job well because those are my interests. Well, I think it's kind of funny because a lot of times history and English teachers tend to get along. It's like always the math and science department they kind of hang out. History and social studies hang out. Because they, they all fight our freaks. Uh, his, well, social studies is kind of history anyway. Yeah. Just sometimes it's a more current than history, but. But yeah, I think that uh, writing teachers and history teachers, they have that in common that they're, they're, they're telling stories. The story of the people that were, you know, the literally were. Yeah. I don't understand really. I mean, I think maybe I have that's. I, I understand, but I don't understand at the same time how someone can not be interested in history at all. <clears throat> but then I think, you know, sometimes teachers aren't very good. They're, I think sometimes teachers got into it for the wrong, some teachers got into it for the wrong reason. They, uh, well, they thought it was going to be an easy job or whatever, but... Or sometimes, I mean, history is a big topic. You can definitely tell the difference. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm saying, like... Well, I'm just saying that, you know, you may have gone into history and you wanted to teach because you were excited about whatever's over here, but then they say, oh, that's nice, but you have to teach this over here. And it's because, like... I know like European history and Asian history for some reason has is is more interesting to me than South American history. Like the yeah. Aztecs and the Incas and stuff, I just I'm like, uh-huh, uh-huh. So that part of history class was boring. Because it just I don't like that. It wasn't my my scene, you know what I mean? So if you're stuck teaching that, because that's just where you are and you know you need a job and you know you normally have to start somewhere and then work your way into the stuff you really want so that can happen i mean i don't really fault those people for that i understand it and there have been times when i i am not the teacher for you if you want to love a fellow i don't care about it that much and uh uh julius caesar you want to love that play? I'm not your teacher. Like that's not because I don't love it. There are sections that I like, and I can point those out. But when Bobby, part of the curriculum, you tell me I have to teach Julius Caesar. I will take about a week tops because that's all I can stand in that play. If you think about the stuff that I normally write, if you think about the stuff that's I I read a lot of this 
you know, same stuff that I like to write. But when it comes to teaching, I'm just, I just kind of did a mental checklist over things like I would say I suck at because they don't interest me and things that I, I'm, I'm actually pretty good at. And those are the things that, you know, are, that interest me, I guess. The literature changes. Like Othello, uh, Julius Caesar, I just, I don't care. But those are in line with the his, historical periods and the, and the more fantasy aspects of things. And then the stuff that I really like to teach and I really get into, of mice and men, um, you know, the great Gatsby, um, uh, the Crucible. I mean, these are modern texts. And they're generally not in my normal wheelhouse for what I enjoy for pleasure reading. Like, Advice of Men would never be a book that I would normally just pick up. But I love teaching it. I think it's a great book. It's kind of weird. It's kind of, I'm just navel gazing, but, you know, listening to the sound of my. Lifeless voice. Right there. Now I gotta make it even all of the boys. Uh, I said a little bit too much there, so now we're going to make it even all over the place. Oh, okay. Got to kind of reactivate some of this stuff. Make it work. about watercolor. You can reactivate it.
This is the first time I think I've actually done something pretty much done on the screen. I'm going to change the sound block. Oh, well, let me just put my big forehead in the camera. Hmm. I was leaning in to see closer because your camera's kind of in the way. And then I noticed how much of my forehead was in the shot. It was not flattering. <laughs> Flattering. I got a giant egg. Yeah, so last night at the basketball game, my wife was talking about some guy she knows, and she was like, "Yeah, but he has a he has a big beard." And I was like, "Excuse me, what is this?" And she's like, "Yeah, but I mean, he's his was like actually long." And I'm like, and I'm looking around the entire arena. I'm like, tell you what, find another man in this arena that has a beard as big as mine. Which, don't get me wrong, I have been plenty of places where people have longer beards. I, I am humble enough to know there are plenty of men out there with longer, lusher beards than mine. That's not what I'm saying. But I am saying, I am getting into the length that puts it at 
you know, a pretty good sized beer. But my wife just, I mean, he has a dog. <laughs> I'm gonna have to some of you, that's all. I hate when they compare my leg to another man's. It's not fair! It takes time to grow this. So, I just reactivated that acrylic wash a little bit. So, it's not true that it can't be reactivated. I'm going to guess, though, that you have to reactivate it in a fairly flat. Yes, that's it. All right. Let's see. Let's get close. He's been drinking. Maybe we'll wrap it. <laughs> well, that was fun. All right, that's that was kind of what my thinking was. And no pressure, kind of some things for tonight. Right. Cool. It takes three hours. But... Get to finish, I don't think that's too bad. All right. Unusual. You can't tell if these bottles are white or whatever. Uh, while we're in this train yard, and I don't have any other windows open because it wouldn't do me any good. Cause I'm not really able to click back and forth and then do the painting. So. But thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Yes, 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 yes,
Judah, Jeff. Thorio. William. Thank you for showing up. Keep hanging out for a while. Good night. God bless. Talk to you later. Peace.